Jesus and experience Jesus even in our transactions. You see, methods are some of the most powerful strategies in creating an instructional setting in which faith and learning are inseparably intertwined. This, this one, the environmental. So, this also includes the pattern, organizational pattern of the school, the, the structure in the cafeteria, the structure in the dorm, and the structure in our offices. Does our office, you know, does our office... Uh, when students come, when clients come, do they, do they feel, you know, uh, relaxed? Na, na unburdened ba sila pag dumating sa atin? Or na, na, naka-experience ba sila ng maaliwalas na, na environment whenever they come to office? This is environmental contextual. Another is, okay, before that, there is this quotation from Taylor again. In order to effectively integ integrate faith and learning, Christian educators must bring the hidden curriculum to the surface. So, kitang-kita po dapat pala, no? Yung ating hidden curriculum sa ibabaw. Also, uh, shall we read this all together? Only ready, read. Only when the tactical and ornamental strategies are joined by a genuinely Christian instructional environment can there be a strong contextual integration of faith and learning. You see, even if we have the Adventist in the name, even if we have the redemption in the philosophy, but our students do not see the environmental. There is no what? There is no strong integration of faith and learning through the contextual. That is why, let me go back to our response when we were asked earlier, why are we here? We are here to support Adventist education. Okay, next Strategy is the illustrative. So we see here, C-I-C-E, illustrative. Under illustrative, we have analogous. And this analogous uses similes and metaphors, personal analogy. Usually, these are being used by our teachers. There is also narrative where this uh, uses illustrations from the Bible, for example, the parable, for example, accounts. These are, you know, the life experiences of some Christians and personal also narrative of a teacher. Okay, we can do this. We can use this. I know that many of you, especially dormitories and those in the SSO, are able to do this. You're doing this. When, whenever we encourage our students, or we provide them inspiration, we give them uh, narratives, right? Especially us who have been speakers in the revival series, we provided, you know, we provided our personal experiences for illustration. This, this is part of narrative. So, with you there also in the library and other offices, well, whenever we go out in the afternoon or whenever we come in the morning, we, we are able to meet students. We're able to meet students and greet them. Good morning. I laugh. I was, we were laughing one time at the Gen Ad after, <clears throat> after our devotional uh, service. And we were having the dis discussion, this reflection. And Dr. Arcelis said, why do we expect students to greet us? And we complain, oh, these students are not greeting. Actually, uh, iba na talaga ang panahon ngayon. Ang mga bata, masalubong ka, hindi na, hindi na, hindi na nag-regreet, hindi na bumabati. But what she said next struck me. 
Pero di ba, sabi niya, pero di ba, ang mother, mother yan. Pag bumaba yung anak mula sa kwarto sa umaga, o kaya lumabas sa kwarto, what do we do? We greet. Hindi naman natin hinihintay na unang i-greet tayo ng ating mga anak, di ba? So why do we do that? Or why do we expect that in the university or in the school? So if, if we, the teachers and staff, are, you know, we consider ourselves as second parents to the students who are enrolled, why do we need to wait on them to greet us first? Why don't we do that? Kilala man natin yan o hindi. Ano po? So we say, we greet them. So this, you know, these are parts of narrative that we can do, whether inside and outside the classroom. Okay, another is the exemplary. Exemplary, in this method, the teacher seeks to evidence in his own life what he wants his students to become. Yeah. So, now we are now showing or our lives, uh, our lives is a reflection of what our students, of what we want our students to become. We want them to be prayerful. We want them to be, we want them to be reading the Bible. They have to see us reading the Bible. If, if we want them to, we want to teach them to be prayerful, we have to invite them to pray with us or to pray for them. That's being an example. And now Dr. Taylor again said, the manner in which the teacher treats the students deal with controversial issues and manifests ethical conduct can graphically illustrate the integration of faith and learning or the lack thereof. Yung, yung ating pakikisalamuha sa kanila ay nagpapakita yan ng, ng pagkakaroon o kawalan ng integration of faith in learning. Nakakapangilabot, no? Kung ang makita nila ay kawalan. And then we say, we are in the Adventist University of the Philippines, and we say we are Christian workers. Pero napakaganda pag sabihin, pag nasalubong yan ng iba, at sabi ay, nakakitaan ko talaga ng buhay kristyano, ng, bu ng, ng, ng may pananampalataya si ma'am sa research, si sir sa ganitong office. Di po ba? I am just trying to, to, what's this? To widen how we can have this. We have more than 4,000 students on campus. At times, we're tempted to go to spend Sabbath services outside. At minsan, nirarationalize ko ba? Okay lang yan kasi wala naman akong class. Wala naman akong interaction with students during, during weekdays. I try to reason that out. Pero, syempre, every day, Pagbaba ko doon, aakyat ako dyan, may mga nakakasalubong akong estudyante, I do not know from what department. At alam niya na ako'y worker. What if on a Sabbath, ay hinahanap ako nung estudyanteng yun? Ba't nasan kaya si ma'am na nakikita kong paakyat sa admin everyday, nakakasalubong ko pagpababa ako? Bakit hindi ko siya mahanap on a Sabbath? And I do not know that student. I may not be able to, to tell him, oh, you know, I went to this church on that Sabbath. Diba? So, you see, these are parts of uh, being examples to our students. Okay, under conceptual, we also have textual. Ito yung napakadaling gawin sa classroom. They use Bible verses, they use uh, a spirit of prophecy quotes or or quotes from you know from from prominent people contextual this is to integrate not only faith but also values 
Another is thematic. And ang thematic, for example, you are trying to, we are trying to integrate, uh, we are trying to integrate integrity. To integrate that, medyo mahirap kasi integrity, ang gagamitin natin ay honesty. Ay, yung mga ganun po. Okay, and then last on this area or on this strategy is what we call valuative. Ito naman po yung, ang example ay ethical principles that include the concept of duty, respect, or special categories of people and situations. And in the classroom, they, this may be done through role-playing. We can also include this in social activities of our students. Last strategy, we have personal. That is under experiential. Dito po ulit tayo babalik. Ano po? So parang yung, yung last na strategy is uh, most, uh, most applicable to our uh, faculty. This one is, is very applicable to us. The personal strategies in the integration of faith and learning seek to help students experience faith and form a close relationship with God as part of their stay in the university. So, uh, to accomplish this, this strategy, tayo pong mga staff, not only the faculty, must take a personal interest on our students. Oh, we have this foster parenting. Kailan na nga po yung foster parenting natin? October 13. Yan. Ito na po yung isa. Having, um, showing them our personal interest in them through the foster parenting is a way of integrating faith and learning. And so, tayo pong mga nandito ay hindi po tayo maa-absent sa October 13. Ano po? Okay po? Yes. Alam nyo? Na, na, na amazed ba ako? Kasi one time na-receive namin yung sabay-sabay kami. Kami sa bahay, tatlo kami. Si Pastor ako, tsaka si Vine. Paggising ni Vine sa umaga, nakita nyo na kung ano? Kung nasa ang, nasa ang dorm or nasa ang apartment si ganito? Tapos tanong ni Pastor Noel, sino naman doon sa apartment? So, so we see, uh, Na-amaze ako kasi meron nang pro-provide ng student services opportunities for us to be involved. To be able to apply this personal experiential strategy of integrating faith and learning. Okay. And then second is the interrelational methods. This method, of course, interrelational, so yan ay, ay forming relationship with them. And here, students are not to hear us speak. Diba, ano po, usually, we are able to, to meet with our students. At dahil we think that our students are, you know, because they're college, Students, we think that they're mature. But in this interrelational strategy, our students should be able to see that any of us, uh, that any of us are not or is not um, competing with another. That we are not competing. That our students should be able to see a harmonious and united workforce. So I am thinking, pag ginagawa po natin ito, interrelational, and I want, we want our students, our youth, to be able to see this through us, hindi sana tayo yung kinariringgan ng nagsasalita tayo ng negative against our fellow worker. Or that we criticize our, our superior. Nara naririnig ng ating mga students. Or that we criticize the university or the processes na naririnig po ng students. Why? 
students pa rin po sila. And when they go home, baka naman po yun yung maiuwi po nila. Kung tatanungin ng parent, how are you able to know that? Well, sir like this, ma'am like this, I heard him, I heard her talking about this. Ano po? And with that, we are not able to, you know, to integrate in uh, faith and learning through interrelational approach. The last one is declarative. And declarative. This is now allowing or uh, molding our students in a way that when they go out, they become witnesses. They become, you know, they are able to preach. They are able to share the faith. What I appreciate most here in AUP, whenever, whenever we talk about our COM students, uh, naririnig ko doon sa, naririnig ko during graduation, commencement, or during our programs, Dr. Mendoza would say, we have blank medical missionaries. We have blank medic, ano to? Nurse missionaries. Mga ganun, di pa po? Yun yung napakagaganda. Ito ay mga, ito ay mga contextual. At ito naman, ay we are act, uh, slowly uh, allowing or having our experience you know, become, become preachers of the word or witnesses in the world. Um, Iniisip ko din ba, isang paraan na magagawa natin ito, yung makikita nila yung involvement natin in community and extension services, no? in what's this, in visitation and other activities. When they see them, when they see us doing that, and much more when we when we have these activities with them, the more that they are able to grasp. Uh, I appreciate yung mga strategies ni Ma'am Cap. So women's ministries, hindi lang tayo mga kababaihan na adult ang kanyang, ang kanyang ginaguide, kanyang nililid. Much more, she is mentoring our ladies in the campus. So that's, this is declarative, mga kaibigan. So going back, we have four strategies with three each, contextual, illustrative, conceptual, and experiential. For us staff, supporters to Adventist education, we can do contextual ornamental. We can do contextual environmental. We can also have uh, experiential personal, experiential interrelational, experiential declarative, and Illustrative exemplary. Very beautiful. Uh, Dr. Taylor again said, without, you see, without illustrative, conceptual, and experiential strategies that integrate faith and learning deeply within the teaching, learning process, and experiences, contextual what? Strategies are simply a veneer. So very important din po yung iba pong mga strategies to integrate faith and learning. Before you go to, uh, to, your, to our activity, okay, I'd like to share... I'd like to share an experience, a testimony of one of the students, former students in Conception Adventist Academy. This is Pastor Wilson Lawad. I don't know if uh, you came to know about him. And his testimony said, My love for Jesus was kindled in the Sabbath school in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in our barangay because he's from a non-Adventist family. When I graduated from elementary, I wished to know more about him, that's Jesus. So I asked my non-Adventist parents to enroll me in Conception Adventist Academy. 
Not only did I know more about the truth in the Bible, but I saw Jesus in my teachers and experience in his love while in school. This led me to accept him through baptism and desire to be one of his workers. And to be able for me to have a verification of the strategy we had back then in Conception Adventist Academy because we placed in a very conspicuous uh, place, the quotation from Ellen White, which tells, make your student life as perfect as possible because you will only pass this way but once. Last, uh, yesterday, I tried to reach out to my students, 2000, 2005. How many years is that? 18 years ago. So I sent a message. Hi, do you still remember the quote that is, you know, strategically placed in fronting the computer room? Sabi ko. And then he replied, Ma'am, you know po ang sumagot? Very ordinary student back then. Ma'am, the quotation says, and he, and he messaged it. Students, make your students' life as perfect as possible because you will pass this way but once. And then I ask, how, that, how has that impacted your life and your student life? And he said, Ma'am, throughout your stay in Conception Adventist Academy, have you heard of any offenses I was able to make? Diba? Wow. And even though he did not go to an Adventist college for, her, for his tertiary education, he carried that and he, he's a good citizen. Hindi po nagkaroon ng problema yung kanya mga magulang. Just for that. And then another one, a very accomplished person. I asked her, Iliu, Iliu is her name. <laughs> Do you still remember that quotation? And she said, Yes, ma'am, but I cannot just remember the whole of it, but it says that I have to make my student life as perfect as possible. How has that impacted you, ma'am? In my choice of my profession and in completing the degree, I put that in mind. So we see, um, maybe we see this, these are just, you know, these are just quotations that we place there, but we just don't know how many lives, how many students have been impacted by the things that we are going to put. And so that by November, we expect that we have quotations in our workplaces. Okay, for our activity, kindly group, how many minutes do we have, ma'am? Remaining? 35 pa? Naku. Parang mapapasama, mapapalaban tayo sa question and answer nito. <laughs> okay. For our group activity, I want us to group by departments, please. Okay, by departments. So library together, apartments together. Si Sir Noel Hael. Sir, ang kasama nyo na pa yung kalapit nyo doon sa area, yung office na yun. Kindly think of strategies how you are going to integrate faith, values, and learning in your workplace. That could be something that's ornamental or that could be something that's environmental or others. Please list as many as you can. If you say that will be ornamental, one of your strategies is ornamental, maybe you can also start writing or jotting down those uh, quotes that you want to place or verses that you want to place in your area. <laughs> 